الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فإن شاء الله this evening we're going to uh, um, look at the the hadith, the verses from the Quran and the prophetic trad- uh, traditions, the authentic prophetic traditions, um, all about living with them in kindness. And this necessitates the husband and the wife. Living with them in kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا And from his signs <coughs> he has cre- that he has created for you, from yourselves, your wives, or your spouses. لِتَسْكُنُوا <coughs> إِلَيْهَا That you may feel a sakina uh, in her. Uh, يعني you feel sakina with her. Sakina is tranquility. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah's place between you and her mawaddah. Love and rahma and mercy. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Indeed, indeed you'll find that there are signs for people who ponder. So from Allah's signs is that He has created, na'am, for the man He has created his spouse, that he may feel a sakina, tranquility with her, living with her, with love and mercy. No doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, na'am, His signs are many, and this is from His signs. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ Many, many signs. And this is from the greatest of His signs. From, from Allah created uh, the, has, the, the the man and He created the woman from the right rib. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this verse showing us that indeed sakina, true sakina, tranquility is not in being alone away from being married. Married is... Half your faith. So being married is khair. Being married, mashallah, tabarakallah, where you help your wife and you aid her and you guard your gaze and your chastity and likewise she guards her gaze and chastity for the woman who prays her, fa- her, her five daily prayers and she keeps her fast and she guards her chastity na'am, and she pleases her husband, then she will enter paradise whichever door uh, she wills. And this is a blessing for that lady, for that woman who pleases her husband. When he looks at her, he, he is pleased. And when na'am, he enters the house, he is pleased. And likewise, when she looks at him, he is pleased. As Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, used to say, I used to uh, beautify myself for my wife. Even the men. Aisha عنها, she used to Perfume the messenger sallallahu She used to comb his hair. She used to comb his hair. And this shows you the, the kindness between the spouses. In helping each other, in serving each other. The, the, the messenger sallallahu said in the hadith which is in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, خيركم, خيركم لأهله. وأنا خيركم لأهلي. The best of you are those who are best to their, to their families. And I'm the best to my family. The best of you are the best to their wives. You be good to your wife, now I'm, you'll be from the best of people. Uh, and I'm the best to my family. Know that the messenger says was the best to his wives. For he was just and he was upright. And he gave them that which he had of gentleness and kindness and mercy. The hadith is in Sunnah uh, Tirmidhi. From the hadith of Aisha Radana and it's Shaykh Al Bani Rahmullah authenticated it. And likewise the Messenger Sallallahu said, Akmalul Mu'minin Imanan, Akmalul Mu'minina Imanan, Ahsanuhum Khuluqa. The best of believers, the most complete of believers uh, in Iman, in faith, are those who are best in character. Wahiyaruhum Khiyaruhum Lini Sa'im and the best of them are those who are best to their wives. Hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi. Naam and likewise authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahmahullah. Having good manners with the people and especially to your family. Al-Aqrabuna awla bi ma'roof. Those who are close to you have more right to your goodness. You can't be good to others and then you leave 
your wife and children without food, without clothing, without shelter, without kindness, without gentleness. No doubt, person is not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Kulli ibn Adam khata wa khairu khata'ina tawabun. The best of those who make mistakes are those who turn into repentance. So there are times when a person gets upset. There are times when there's ups and downs between the husband and wife. But that shouldn't be the norm. The house should be a place of happiness. The house should be a place where the Quran is recited. The house should be a place where shaitan flees. The house should be a place where Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. The house should be, should be a place where Salah is reminded. We remind our children. وَأَمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا And command your family with the prayer. And be patient in doing that. يعني continuously you're commanding them with the prayer. You wake them up for Fajr. Or they wake you up for Fajr. تَعَاوَنُ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى You wake your children up. SubhanAllah, the older you get, the less sleep you require. And when you're young, the younger you are, the more sleep you see that children find it hard to get up. So you get them up. And you get up your wife. And you remind each other of the five daily prayers. Because the best, uh, most beloved action to Allah is prayer in its time. Hadith in Bukhari. Ya Rasulullah, ayu amalin ahabbu ilallah as salatu fi waqtiha. ثُمَّ مَنْ ثُمَّ مَادَ قَالُ بِرُ الْوَلِدَيْنِ Then after that, being dutiful to one's parents. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَا يَفْرُكْ مُؤْمِنٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ Let not any one of you believers uh, يَفْرُكْ Meaning, hit uh, his wife. His be- let not any one, a mu'min uh, hit, sorry, a believing woman. In kariha min, and here is referring to the wife. In kariha min ha khuluqan, if he dislikes a character in her, radiya min ha akhar, then he's pleased with another character that she has, any other character, good characters that she has. So she may have a bad character in some things. She may be, يعني, she may have good bad character. But you look at also something that's good that she has. Naam. Not to yafruk ha, wa yafruk huna means to have to show anger to hate her naam meaning that you harm her naam sallallahu salama so not necessarily it means hit but necessarily it means uh, as is mentioned in an nihaya fi gharib al hadith it means la yubghid ka'annahu hatha ala husn al ishra this is the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraging us to have good character with our wives that they should not hate or dislike or show that um, unless it's something that is taking away the the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the messenger says will not become angry for personal reasons but he become angry if the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not kept upright is not met so for example when it would be prayer time he would become angry if he missed Oh, if the prayer is about to go. There's a narration which mentions Naam, he was in an expedition and he said they delayed us. Yani, the disbelievers in the battle, they delayed us. Naam, and they prayed Asr much later. So he was angry because of delaying Asr. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became angry for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for uh, a revenge, taking revenge for personal reasons. So if, he, if a person dislikes any character in her, then he's pleased with another or other character that she has. So remembering that generally she's upon goodness. And if he dislikes something, he can discuss with her. He can say, look, I'm not happy with such and such. I'm not happy with such and such. And uh, communication is very important in marriage. That you sit down with your spouse and you discuss and uh, with women you have to be gentle Naam. sometimes you may say a word that uh, um, that uh, slips a word that slips of anger a word of anger that slips and it makes her more angry <coughs> and in this case astaghfirullah tubuli 
you know, when shaitan is pushing you to, to fight, and to argue, and to divorce in reality, then you remember, and you say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. And you follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Look, no one's perfect. <coughs> we all make mistakes. Then you follow up a bad deed with good deed. But how do you follow up a bad deed with bad deed? No, follow up a bad deed with a good deed. If you said a hard word, harsh word, and you're angry because of something that you, you know, maybe food was late or something, and subhanAllah, sometimes we're not patient, make mistakes, then what do you do? Go and do dishes to make up for that anger, to make up for that bad word. Do, go and do the dishes, go and do some uh, housework, and follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Why? Because this will bring... Uh, this will bring her back. This will be with women. You have to, it's easy to break them, and it's easy to please them. It's easy to break them. You have to be careful how you say things and what you say, and it's easy to please them. Now again, you have to say. You have to be careful. You have to choose your words and how you say it. <laughs> okay, so my dear brothers and sisters, those who are married. They know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring, uh, bless all of our marriages and bless our children. Especially if you have children, you better be more patient. You better be more careful what you say and how you say it. Because the best of you are the best in manners. And I'm the best to my spouse, to, to my wives. So be good to your wives and they will be good to you. You can win them over easily. You know, in this country, they go around, uh, they encourage that people uh, in, in the haram time, like the Valentine's Day, they go around with red roses and this. We don't choose this day. But there's no harm in going around with some flowers or gifts. The Messenger Wasallam said, Tahadu tahabu. Give gifts to each other, bring love between each other. So give gifts between each other. Especially when you come back from a journey. Naam. Don't come back empty handed Especially your children won't be looking at you only They'll be looking at your suitcase So you come back with some gifts For your children Come back for some gift for your wife That's khair The messenger وسلم, When he advised the women likewise He says The messenger وسلم, said I saw that most of the inhabitants of the hellfire Are women وَذَلِكَ أَنَّكُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ تَكْفُرْنَ That is because you show ingratitude. قَالُوا نَكْفُرُ بِاللَّهِ You mean that we uh, show ingratitude and uh, deny the favors of Allah? You mean that? قَالَ لَا He said no. تَكْفُرْنَ الْعَشِيرَةِ Or تَكْفُرْنَ الْعَشِيرَةِ That you, uh, you show ingratitude in living with your Spouse, yani with your husband for what he does in bringing the food to the table, in paying the bills, in giving shelter, in clothing you, in looking after the children, aiding them, being there for them and for you. If it's good to her, yani all his life is being good. What does she say? Wallahi ma ra'aytum minka khayran qat. Wallahi I didn't see you do any good. Subhanallah. Sahih. Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. You didn't see you do any good. All that good that you did, I didn't see you do any good. They forget, but not always forgetful of the bad that you do. <laughs> yes. In 19 such and such, you did such and such. Ah, You see? Because shaitan is... Ah, Yanghuz. A shaitan is busy trying to uh, cause enmity between you two. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنْ يُوقَعْ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءِ Indeed, shaitan wants to cause enmity and hatred between you. So this is, not, this is something which is going to happen. He's going to try do his to make her remember uh, all the bad about you. SubhanAllah. Men generally forget more than women when it comes to bad things. Men forget more. Men generally just want to move on. <laughs> huh? Want to move on generally. 
But you have to be careful what you do because it won't be forgotten. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bring love between uh, the, the, the husbands and the wives. May Allah bring love between them and keep their closeness and focus upon bringing their children up and aiding each other to get to Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Kana Yakunu fi Mihnati Ahlihi was busy in the service of his wife and family. Yani he would serve them. He was there serving his family, helping his family. And likewise you but my dear brothers, naam, those who are married, serve your family. Make sure that they you bring happiness to them, bring a morsel of food and put it in their mouth. Subhanallah, this is khair. كان في مهنة أهله يحلب شاته نعم the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to milk the goat in order to get milk for his family ويخصف نعله and he would mend his own shoes he would mend his own shoes حديث المسلم أحمد حديث في عائشة رضي عنها and this is صحيح الجامع الشيخ الباني رحمه الله authenticated it he would mend his own shoes and another thing you can do is cook. Cook for your family. Do the washing up. Take care of your, your affairs in the house. That's why the Messenger Sallallahu when he was asked by Uqba ibn Amr, where lies salvation? He said, Amsik alayka lisanak. Guard your tongue. Wal uh, yasaka baytuk. And let your, and be concerned with your house. وَبْكِي عَنْ خَطِيئَتِكَ And cry over your sins. The hadith of Uqba ibn Amr رضي الله عنه. And here the hadith says, وَلْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُ Concern yourself with your home. Meaning, and I asked uh, Shaykh Rabi this question, hadith of Sunan Abi Dawud. I asked this question to Shaykh Rabi and he said, وَلْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُ He said that you make sure your children are learning, your family, they are benefiting that you are responsible over them. So it's true. We have to be responsible over them. Make sure to encourage them in their education. Encourage them to push them to learn the Quran. Learn the Quran. Learn the Quran. Let them memorize the Quran. Memorize the Quran. If they're not able to memorize all of it, then large portions of it with the meaning and then ponder over it and then practice it. This is why the Quran was revealed for these three. To read it, to ponder over it, and to practice it. Also, in the family as well, na'am, playing, give time for playing in the house, playing with your wife, by racing against her, just as the Messenger Sallallahu raced against Aisha radi anha. Na'am, and uh, initially she beat him, and then he beat her. And he said, uh, he said, this one, bitilk, yani hada bitilk. You beat me, so I beat you. This is like uh, as the response of the other one. Meaning, uh, he was happiness. Keeping that happiness with his spouse. Racing them, competing with them. Doing things like that where you bring happiness in the house. Not just in the house, go out. Sheikh Ubaid, Allah Rahmu, he used to go out with his family. Whenever the break time comes, he would go and hire a villa, istiraha. Naam, where the family can go out and naam, be in the istiraha, change the jaw. Huh? Not always in the house, go out and see the, the, the blessings of Allah's creation. Let the family go out and see as a family do things together. Take them out and let you do things together. Naam. And this is something which is important. Naam, the household should not be just, it should not be fire uh, and stone. Where the husband comes in and he's a lion. But outside with his friends is a cat. Inside is a lion ready to roar. And, uh, why is this? This shouldn't be like that. With his family, he should be, uh, he should be kind and gentle. And you know, at the end of the day, live with them in kindness. And you'll find that they will live with you in kindness. You are the one responsible at the end of the day. You are the one that is going to be questioned about them and they're going to be questioned about you. 
But the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kafa bil mari ithman an yadayya min yaul." It is enough sin for a man that he discards his responsibility under him. Uh, this is a, and uh, here is a beautiful story. Naam, which shows us that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he defended Naam one of his wives. The Hadith of Anas radhiyallahu anhu. Safiya, the wife of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Heard that Hafsa Naam, had said about her, radiallahu anha, Ah, bint Yahudi, that you are a daughter of a Jewish man. And so she cried, Fabakat Safiya. Safiya became Muslim. Naam, Aslamat. And she was Jewish. She was from a Jew, Jewish uh, uh, family. And she became a Muslim. So when she heard this from Hafsa, she cried. And this is يعني, the jealousy between the wives. This is something which is a natural thing. But this statement is incorrect. And the Messenger وسلم, defended her. دخل عليها النبي وسلم. When the Messenger وسلم, entered upon her and he saw that she was crying, he said, ما يبكيك? What is it that you're crying for? فقالت قالت لي حفصة إني ابنة يهودية ابنة يهودية حفصة said to me that I am a daughter of a Jewish Ibn to Yahudi, I'm a daughter of a Jewish man. Faqai Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa inna ki ibn to Nabiyin, rather, you are daughter of a prophet. Wa inna ammak Nabiyun, and your uncle is a prophet. Wa inna ki la tahta Nabi, and you are under a prophet, yani under the responsibility of a prophet. Fafima tafkharu alayk, so what is it that she is? Uh, she is saying over you. So here shows you that the Prophet Naam comforted her Naam and took the weight off her shoulders. And then he went to Hafsa and he said to her, Taqillah ya Hafsa. Taqillah, fa Allah o Hafsa. Yani for what you have said. Uh, and this is in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood, which is also authentic. Sahal Albani rahimahullah. Naam. The Messenger وسلم, Naam showed his love that he had to his wives. He showed his love. And for example, one way that he used to show is that when, uh, uh, as, as is reported by Aisha, عنها, she said, indeed the Messenger وسلم, Naam, would come and give me uh, a cup of water to drink. There's not, uh, this is a praiseworthy thing. Serving your wife, making tea for your wife. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Making tea for your wife. Making uh, food for your wife. Making cake for your wife, if you're able. Yeah, any, anything good like that is good. Mashallah, more so that you put in your wife's mouth. Sadaqah, charity. So he said, she said that the messenger has to come and he will give a cup of water for me to drink. So I would drink from it, she says. Naam, whilst I was in the state of menses, I would drink from it. Then he would take it and he would drink from the same place that I drank from. Naam. And likewise, there were times that if we had some food, naam, and it was rare that we would have meat. But if we had some meat, naam, the Messenger وسلم, would take it and he would eat again from the same place that I had eaten from. No, and this shows again uh, the love that he had and showed her that look, even though you're in the state of menses, then this doesn't mean that we keep away from you. Hadith in Sahih Muslim, we don't keep away from you in terms of uh, eating and drinking because it is in the, uh, the Yahud they used to keep away from the women in their menses. They would not sit with them they would not be together with them. And they went ext- extreme, treated their women badly when it came to their state of menses. Likewise, the Messenger وسلم, did not forget the khair of any of his wives or whatever they had done. When Khadija Radana comforted him and she said, Allah will not abandon you. For indeed you take care of the poor and needy. And you don't, and you take care of the abandoned one. When no one has asked about that abandoned one, you take care of him. You ask about him, and you go. To, you are good to your guest. 
So he would much, mashallah, remember the good of Khadija radiallahu anha. One time Aisha radiallahu anha, this is not true. She said, oh, you're mentioning, so, uh, you're mentioning uh, the old lady, meaning Khadija radiallahu anha. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that which is better. Aisha radiallahu anha said. You mentioned old lady, and Allah has given you better. Then the Messenger وسلم, defended Khadija radiallahu anha. He said, Allah did not give me better. Referring to Khadija radiallahu anha. Even though he said that Aisha is from the best of the women, like the best dish that you would have. But he said about Khadija radiallahu anha, indeed she believed in me when many disbelieved in me. And na'am, she... Uh, 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 trusted in me when many had belied me and also she helped me with, in, with her wealth when many people withheld their wealth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to have a child with her no. and in other cases he mentioned about Khadija radiallahu anha that she comforted him and she stood by him yeah, and he through the difficult times as well as the the easy times no Likewise, one should not forget, shaitan is always there. Shaitan runs through Ibn Adam, through his veins, and in the blood. The Messenger, وسلم, one time he wanted to uh, uh, make sure that Safiya, who came to visit him while he was doing i'tikaf, and she stayed for a long uh, time until the late evening. So the Messenger, وسلم, didn't want her to go alone back to her home. So he walked with her outside to make sure that she reaches home safely. And when, when uh, he saw two companions, uh, he stopped them and said, look, she's my wife, just to stop any ish, f- bad thought coming to them from shaitan. They said, no, messenger, from you we will have bad thought. And the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, indeed, shaitan, now he runs through the blood of Ibn Adam, and I feared that he will put in your heart something, yani something of bad thoughts against me. And this shows you that if you have, the, you should leave off shubuhat. The Prophet said, the halal is clear and the haram is clear, and between them are the doubtful matters. Whoever keeps away from the doubtful matters, he's free from blame, in terms of his deen and in terms of his honor. In terms of his deen, Allah will not blame him. Shaykh ibn Uthaymir said, in terms of his deen, Allah will not blame him. In terms of his honor, Allah, uh, the people won't blame him. So don't bring doubts around you. Look, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, straight away is going to those men in order for them not to have any doubt about him. He said, indeed, this is Safiya that is with me. Yeah, he his wife. And that narration is in Bukhari. Now, Likewise, the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, um, likewise he used to show compassion between the wives, for indeed, when Sauda visited the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, um, and uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she made some soup and some food, um, but Sauda didn't have any food. No. Aisha cooked. And Sauda was not eating. So Aisha said to her, eat. So Sauda did not eat. Aisha said, if you, 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 you eat, or I will put some of this soup on, on your face. Huh? <laughs> she said, so she, but she did not eat. So she took some of the soup and put it on her face. The mess, in the messenger's presence, the messenger said, you have to do it back. Uh, to be just, you have to do it back. Naam, in her face. He said, Il taqhi wajhaha. Naam. And after that, the messenger, when she did that, she, the messenger Asim, laughed. And again, this is justice. Naam. Soup for soup. Naam. If some, <laughs> and this sometimes happens even between the children. Naam. Justice. How many times children come and complain about each other? You have to be just. You have to listen to this one. You have to listen to that one. And it's a long story sometimes, but still you have to be patient. 
and then يعني, try to يعني, deal justly with them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said taqullah fi awladikum huh? fear Allah concerning your children that you be just towards them i'dilu bayna awladikum no. and also the messenger said, when he'd come back from a journey he would delay when he came back to Medina one time he would delay going to the house. He would not surprise his household. He would not surprise them after coming back from a journey. Rather, he would tell them when he's coming. Naam. And he would go to pray in Masjid Nabawi two rak'ahs and sit with the, some of the companions and then he would go home. And uh, some scholars mentioned that the reason behind uh, going to the Masjid Nabawi to pray two rak'ahs is so that uh, the wife has enough time to beautify herself. Because the, the, the man does not want to enter the house and she's not beautified. And she doesn't want to see her husband rough and not be also handsome. So that's why Aisha, she used to comb his hair, Ali salam, and she used to perfume him. And the messenger asked him as he would enter the house, he would use the miswak. <coughs> so here we have na'am, yani, both the husband and the wife. It's not just the first three months of marriage. That you beautify yourselves for each other. Naam. And then after that, subhanAllah, you don't remember the one that you married. Yani, no, it shouldn't be like that. You should be, you both, naam, keep yourself kept, wearing the best of clothes. Wahakada, you're looking after each other. So that she protects you when you go outside and you protect her. Wallahi, we have to protect each other. And uh, Ibn Abbas عنهما, he said, Inni uhibbu an atazayyana lil mar'ah. Indeed, I love that I beautify myself to my wife. Kama uhibbu an tatazayyana li al mar'ah. Just like I love that my wife beautifies herself to me. Naam, and then he quoted the verse in the Quran where Allah said, Walahunna mithlu ladi alayhinna bil ma'roof. And for them, is the same righteousness that, th- that you ask of them. So you ask of them to be, mashallah, beautiful, and you ask of them to wear good clothes, and you ask of them to not you know, smell except with good fragrance. Likewise, what's upon them is upon you. وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Surah Al-Baqarah verse 228. I'm sure the women will memorize this verse. Surah Al-Baqarah 228. وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ So have, show ma'roof to them just as you want ma'roof from them. It was said to Aisha رضي عنها uh, It was said to Urwa رضي الله عنه بِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ طَيَّبَتْ طَيَّبْتِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم بِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ طيبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت بأطيب الطيب This is Arwa reporting from Aisha رضي عنها What is the What did you use as fragrance for the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم She said the best of fragrances The hadith in Sahih Muslim So Aisha رضي عنها نعم For the love that she had for the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم She would uh, Put perfume on him And likewise she used to take care of his guests. And this is something that the wife should do. To show kindness to her husband is take care of his guests. When they come, that he, uh, she prepares good food. That she makes sure the house is clean. And he helps her, no doubt. She does her best to make, her, to make the guests happy. His guests happy. And vice versa. He does his best likewise. He gets the food. Now maybe her family is coming over. And that's another benefit, that you be good to each other's families. You be good and patient. Maybe some harm may come from the mother-in-law, but you be patient. And sometimes harm comes because maybe not all families are compatible. The wife has the right to have her accommodation, her own quarter, her own home. She has the right to have her own privacy. Not all, sometimes it works whether whether wife naam, is with the in-laws in the house. Sometimes it works, but many times it doesn't work. 
And so the woman sometimes wants her privacy. No. At the same time, so, so give her, her her privacy. Make sure that she has her own space of cooking, of looking after you, and so on. So this is something that is important to keep marriages yani, uh, intact. And also the Messenger Sallallahu mentioned about the rights of the men. The Messenger Sallallahu said, Ya ma'ashir nisa O women, لو تعلمنا حق أزواج كنا علي كنا لجعلت المرأة من كنا تمسح الغبار عند قدمي قدمي عند قدمي زوجها بحر وجهها. Here, indeed, O oh women, if you knew the rights of your husbands upon you, then نعم, the woman would have gone to the extent of wiping the dust نعم, from the uh, from the feet of her husband. Wiping the dust from the feet of her husband. Yani to that extent, the husband has great rights upon you. نعم, no doubt, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, proof that you uh, uh, يعني, show extremism, but the proof here is showing that we should be good to each other. The husband who puts food on the table and strives is utmost. He goes out to work, comes back late, and he is caring for you, protecting you, making sure you have security in your home and outside your home, educating your children, looking after your children, playing with your children, going out together, spending time together, keeping the family unit intact, spending that the men have that daraja over women for what they spent over them, for what they spent. For indeed, that is a reason they spend over their wives and their children and they take care of them. And the wife likewise, نعم, she takes care of the household. When he's away, he trusts her and she takes care of her, of his children. The Messenger وسلم, encouraged that um, the best woman he mentioned, he said, marry the women that are fertile and loving. This shows us that um, the Messenger وسلم, encouraged to have children, if one is able to have children um, that will keep the family unit stronger, that you look after them, that you live for them. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're living as well to look after your children. And from that is and the obedience to Allah. And likewise, in that hadith, he said, Al-Wadud, the loving women. Not the women that are always complaining, the women that always na'am, have yani, stern, stone face. No. The women should be smiling, should be uh, loving, caring, sharing, and wanting to look after her household. Now, of course, we all have feelings. And it's possible the woman is na'am, mistreated. And what does she do here? She supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best times. That Allah rectifies her husband. She tries her best to find ways of rectifying her husband that maybe is uh, not, not being kind to her. She, does, she finds ways. She makes good food for him and then advises him. Chooses the right time to give him advice. Not, not in the time when he's uh, not going to accept that advice. So there's hikmah, there's wisdom. When is the right time? And of course, that person that you consider to be na'am, uh, showing uh, uh, bad manners to you, he's not always going to be like that. There's going to be times where he shows goodness to you. Choose those times. You know what he likes from the good food, na'am, from good words. So you can win him over, inshallah, and you, you are able to get him. To, 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 to be a guide for him, a reason for his guidance. Because maybe he's turned away. Maybe he's gone further and further away. You have to try and get him back. Get him back to, uh, to the truth. So be loving, be kind. And Allah says, أحسن, Push forward with one that is better. You're not perfect, he's not perfect. But push forward one that is better. Make you a reason for his guidance. 
Whoever calls the people to goodness, he will have the reward of all those that follow him. So if you, if you call him to goodness and he turns back and you're doing dua and he's turning back, alhamdulillah. The hadith which we just mentioned about the women being wadud al wadud, walud, that hadith in Sunnah be Dawud, and it is authentic. Being kind, gentle. Naam, ma kan rifku min shay illa shal, illa zana. Whenever gentleness is mixed with something, it beautifies it. And whenever it's kept away from something, it disfigures it. So gentleness. But there may be times where the, the, the husband may say words that are, yani, um, maybe not so gentle, but firm. Maybe it requires firmness, that, that situation. And maybe it doesn't. And that's why the likes of Shaykh al-Albani, rahmanullah, say, he said that shidda has a place and gentleness has a place. And it requires hikmah to know when to use each. So it may be that the husband fell short in his ishtihad. And he used firmness in other than his place, outside his place. So be patient. If it's a matter of ishtihad, if it is a matter... If it is not a matter of ishtihad, firmness should be in its place uh, and gentleness should be in its place. If it is a matter of ishtihad, na'am, then you do your best to reach the correct position by using either one, firmness and gentleness in their correct place. No doubt, getting married... The Messenger Sallallahu mentioned that it got, is, is, is to guard your chastity. To guard your chastity. Ya ma'ashar al-shabab. Man istata'a minkum itazawaj fal yitazawaj. Wa man lam yastati' fa'alayhi bis-sawm. Oh youth, whoever's able to get married, get married. And whoever's not, then fast. Why? Because it extinguishes desires. Now, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If the woman, she prays her five daily prayers, fast the month of Ramadan, and she guards her chastity, her private parts. And she obeys her husband in the good things. It is said to her, Udkhulil Jannata min ayyib abwabil janna shi'ti. It is said to her, enter paradise from whichever door of the gates of paradise you wish. Allahu Akbar. And that is hadith in Ibn Hibban mentioned in Sahih. And the hadith is in Sahih al-Jami' authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani. Alhamdulillah. And also waking each, waking each other up, which we mentioned, Rahimallah, Rajulan Kama bin Min al Lay, Thumma Aikada Ahlahu, Fain Abat, Nadaha fi Wajiha al Ma'a. May Allah have mercy upon the man that gets up in the night and he wakes up his wife to pray. And if he, she doesn't wake up, then he puts trickle of water na'am, over her and vice versa. Why she does the same. Hadith Sunnah with Dawood and it's in Sahih al jami So all of these is encouraging each other to get to Jannah. Because your wife, your husband, is your Jannah or your Nar? Is your paradise or your hellfire? No. The Messenger Sallallahu said, إِنَّكَ لَن تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِ بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ عَلَيْهَا Indeed, you men, there isn't any Nafaka, any, yani, uh, anything that you spend on your family, seeking the face of Allah, except that you're rewarded. Even that which you put in the mouth of your, yani, a morsel that you put in the mouth of your wife, you will be rewarded. Hatta ma tajalu fi fi imratik tujar. Ala dalik hadith in Sahih Bukhari. So you put food in your wife's mouth, you get you get reward. La shak. And you feed her what you feed yourself. You clothe her which you clothe yourself. And you don't hit especially the face. Nor do you insult. No. Nor do you insult. The messenger says we never hit any of his wives. He never had any woman cut uh, at all with his blessed hands. As Anas radiallahu said, I never touched any hands softer than the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu He never had anyone from the women. So we should also be kind to the wives. Naam. And there's times where she makes mistakes. Be forgiving. 
If not at the first instance, at least at the second instance. Forgive. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Likewise, she's forgiven of you. At the end of the day, none of you and none of us are perfect. So, it is going back to Ish. The original verses which talk about gentleness, kindness, forgiving, concealing of faults. And Shaykh Ubaid used to say that if there is an argument and you argue and she argues and you continue and it's not going to end in a good way. So he said, one of you leave the room. And if you leave the room and your wife follows, then leave the house. <laughs> huh? Leave the house. And then come back. Subhanallah, she would calm down. It's gone. Huh? That is the best uh, solution. From the best solutions. Of course, at the time of anger, say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. At the time of anger, sit down. And if you're still angry, lie down. Go and do wudu. Well, I do wudu helps at the time of anger. Do wudu. Because shaitan now, he's trying to get you to rage. So, uh, the messenger so I said, said, فَانْظُرِي أَيْنَ أَنْتِ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ جَنَّتَكِ وَنَارُكِ فَإِنَّهُ جَنَّتُكِ وَنَارُكِ Look towards how he sees you. For you are his Jannah. Um, for he is your Jannah, sorry, and he is your hellfire. Look how he sees you. How does he see you? Loving, caring, helping, sharing, aiding, na'am, overlooking, forgiving, concealing of his faults, or always mentioning... You did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. And it's a never ending story. There has to be a time where you just calm down and say, Khalas, Allah Samah. There has to be that time when he's sincere and he takes back his errors. Or she's sincere, she takes back the, her errors. Has to be a time where there's reconciliation. If you pull and she pulls the same rope, like a tug of war, it's not going to be healthy. It's not going to end in a good way. For indeed, uh, uh, most marriages fail because of vengeance, revenge. And here we have the beautiful advice of Shaykh Ubaid ibn Abdullah al-Jabri rahimullah regarding forgiving each other. Isti'mal al-afu wa safh Using al-afu, pardoning, was-saf, forgiving, overlooking, wal-musamaha. Kathirun min al-azwaj yandammu ila al-akhar wa huwa mu'iddun fi nafsi an yantaqima. Many husbands and wives, they actually prepare themselves to take revenge. Huh? They're planning. Well, as soon as he comes home, I'm going to say this to him. Huh? As soon as he comes home, as soon as I see her, I'm going to say something. They start planning, maybe even writing down uh, on a piece of paper how I'm going to tackle the revenge. Uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or even messages. Why that much? To that extent? To that extent you're raging? Why are you enraged? Subhanallah, shaitan is getting the better of you. Shaitan is getting the better of you, Nusallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For both husband and wife, huh? they're preparing. Sometimes, some occasions may happen where they're preparing against each other to, huh? well, I'm going to take my revenge. I'm not going to take that from her. And he, she's not gonna, I'm not going to take that from him. And they're raging. يَنْتَقِمُ مِنَ الْآخَرِ وَأَنْ يُحَاسِبُهُ Try to call him to account. إِذَا قَصَّرَ فِي حَقِّهِ if, uh, if he became short, Deficient in her rights. فَهَذَا مَدْخَلٌ مِنْ مَدَاخِلِ الشَّيْطَانِ This is an opening from the openings of shaitan. وَكَانَ الْوَاجِبِ يَتَفَاءَ الْكُلٌّ مِنْهُمَا وَيَسْتَبْشِرَ كُلٌّ مِنْهُمَا خَيْرًا And it was upon them that they should have good thoughts and good outcome. That each one will inshallah make, will be better and there will be good Outcome in them turning back and being better in their actions. 
فإذا قصر أحد الزوجين في حق الآخر فينبغي لصاحب الحق أن يعامله بالصبر وسعة الصدر So if this situation happens where one of them now is fallen short maybe the husband fell short then what is upon the wife? Patience and spacious uh, spacious yani being, being, being patient a wide chest meaning wide in patience yani not always constricted chest constricted heart narrow heart constricted heart against your husband no make your heart spacious and there's no harm in, in discussing with your companion with gentleness والرفق والحسن and good speech good speech and gentleness فقد يكون تقصيره هذا منشأه الغفلة because his deficiency could be due to his غفلة heedlessness he was not aware he forgot men are very forgetful more than women أو النسيان أو الجهل فيفي إلى رشده ويؤدي ما كان قصر فيه such that if you, if you speak to him with kindness and you're patient and you uh, such that he comes back to his senses he comes back to, to his good deeds now I mean that which he was deficient in أو يتبين عجزه or he himself realizes نعم, and he clarifies his deficiency. نعم, فيرحمه الآخر. And then the other spouse, what, does, what do, do, do they do? They show rahma. ويسامحه, and they forgive. And they overlook. وهند عند الله خير الخلف. And you will have that which is better. فمن ترك شيئا لله عوضه الله خيرا منه. Whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him better. Not every argue, not everything has to be an argument. Not everything has to be a complaint. Can't, otherwise the marriage won't go, won't continue. Not everything will have to be argumentation and fire and stone and argument. No. There has to be time of forgiveness. There has to be time of overlooking. There has to be time of forgetting. Yani overlooking. Not always remembering the bad. So he says, our and if you leave something for Allah's sake, you're in the right. But you left it for Allah's sake, Allah will give you better. Allah will change that situation where your spouse will be rectified. And with this, the Messenger said, إِنَّكَ لَن تَدَعَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ إِلَّا بَدَّلَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَا هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْهُ The Messenger said, Indeed, that you do not leave something for the sake of Allah except that Allah gives you that which is better. Allah changes it for that which is better. The hadith is Muslim Imam Ahmad and it is it's not is, uh, is uh, sahih. Naam Shaykh al-Albani rahmullah had mentioned. وبهذا تكون منهما إن شاء الله تطبيق الآية with this they will be able to completely fulfill the verse وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِ يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ And say to my slaves that they say good and better speech. نعم يَقُولُ يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ That they say speech that is better from what they heard. Maybe your husband said something wrong. You be better. Say that which is أَحْسَنَ Not just husna, but أَحْسَنَ Better. It's going to be better if you're going to argue back. It's not going to be better when you're fighting. It's not going to be better when you're arguing. It's not going to be better when you're raising your voice. It's not going to be better. Because shaitan is there. Look what Allah said afterwards. Inna shaytana yanzaghu baynahum. Shaitan tries to cause a nazgh between them. That whispering. Evil whispering. Inna shaytana kana li insani aduwan mubina. Indeed shaitan is a clear enemy to, the, to man. To mankind. Likewise, the Sheikh, Sheikh uh, uh, Ubaid rahimullah said, Naam, what is the tariq al-qawwama wa that 
that darajah that the, the husband has. What is it? It's from the spending that he does of the bills, of bringing food on the table. But of course, that's not enough. He has, still has to show kindness. Still has to be. Uh, he shouldn't use that as a reason for him to harm his wife. No doubt. But it's an obligation for the woman that well, if her husband is establishing the household and he's fulfilling the household, now that she herself realizes that, look, he's looking after the children. He's looking after her household. He's doing his responsibility. And this is what's his responsibility. And it's a great responsibility. And he's showing his qawama, his rujula. He's showing that he is a man. And he's just. And he's fulfilling his rights. Upon uh, yani, the rights of his wife and his children. By doing good terbiya, good education. And good advice to his family. And such that he requires from his family a good uh, upbringing for his children. I mean, no, I mean the, And he looks after the dunya and deen. Dunya and akhirah. And he should prepare, and he should prepare himself to help his wife. No, by advising her. No, helping her in the education, education and cultivation of her children, of his, of their children, and in commanding and, and forbidding, commanding the good in the household and forbidding the evil and helping her in the household. He says, and good speech. All of this, naam, he is preparing in the house and bringing much. Then she replies that with what? By fulfilling his rights. And that they together, يتعاونون على البر والتقوى. They together help each other upon righteousness and piety. And that is the end of Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabi rahimullah's speech. And then we come to the speech of Shaykh ibn Atimi rahimullah in Sharh Mumti. If you go to volume 12, Page 381, he says, the whole, whole section there on Ishrat and Nisa, living kindly or living with women, yani your wives. Thumma alam, he says, Sheikh ibn Uthaymin Rahmullah says, Thumma alam anna mu'amalatak li zawjatik yajibu an tuqaddar ka anna rajulan zawjan li ibnatik. He says that your interaction with your wife, naam, should be to the extent where how you want your daughter to be treated by another man. <coughs> so how you want your daughter be to be treated? Kindly, sah? You want your daughter to have a good husband who doesn't beat his wife, but he's looking after his wife. It was your own daughter. So you should treat other people's daughters well. And he continu- continues. كَيْفَ يُعَامِلُهَا فَهَلْ تَرْضَى and you amiluha bil jafa wal qaswa. Are you happy that your son in law treats your own daughter with harshness and dryness and difficulty, harsh and sternness? Al jawab? <coughs> La. In reality, you don't. Either la tarda and to amal bintan nas bima la tarda and to amal and to amal and to amal bihi ibnatuk. Just as you don't like to treat your daughter, your daughter to be treated unjustly, then don't treat the daughters of other people unjustly. This principle, every person must know it. How you treat others. How you like to be treated. How you want to be treated. As the Messenger said, in the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu is, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. You love for your sister what you love for yourself. And likewise, the messenger Ali sallallahu alayhi wa said, when he gave his daughter, هي لك على أن تحسن صحبتها When he gave his daughter, Fatima radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, what did he say? She's for you. She's for you with the condition that you show good companionship to her. 
that you show good companionship to her. A hadith which is in reported in the Tabrani and a hadith is 166 in the Sahiha, volume 1. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So when you give your daughters, of course you want the husband to treat your daughters well. So you should also treat the daughters of other people well. And also we have the statement of Shaykh Nuhatim, from a fatwa that came in Nurun ala darb When he was asked a question, Naam, about a man who's stingy, he has money. He gave us the money, he gave us the money, but he doesn't spend on his children, doesn't spend on his wife. He's stingy, he's tight-fisted. What does Shaykh, Shaykh Nuhatim, Allah say? لا يحل له أن يبخل بما يجب عليه من ذلك. It's not allowed for him to be miserly in that which is obligatory upon him. وهو إذا بخل به كان سفيها من ناحيتين. If he is like that, tight-fisted, he doesn't spend on his wife and his children, then he is actually a safi. He's foolish from two angles. He's foolish. He's stupid from two angles. From the first angle, he's a safi. Why? Because he's oppressed himself. In that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated upon him. And everyone who's, who leaves obligation as upon him is oppressed himself. For nafs is, 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 a, is a trust. He is now married to this woman. He has children. They are trust upon his neck. That's one angle. Another angle why he's foolish and stupid. Ah. Uh, in not, in, in, in not spending on his wife and kids. Now, he says, because this wealth, which he is saving, when he dies, is going to go to his wife and kids anyway. So, in reality, he's stupid. He's going to go to them anyway. So you should look after them while, they're still al- while you're still alive. Because even when you're dead, he's going to go to them anyway. And that is a beautiful point from uh, Shaykh Nuhatayim, alhamdulillah. And no doubt, when you give... When you spend on your wife, when you spend on your children, then you bring them closer to you. You bring them closer. You show them your responsibility na'am, upon them. And this is how Rasulullah was. He would show responsibility. And whatever you give charity, Allah will replace it. Yani will give you not just what you spent, but more. And Allah is the best of those who provide. So, something that, uh, if you're able to get married, get married. If you're not able to get married, then be patient fast until Allah opens a way out for you. And if you're already married and you want to take a second wife, if you have the ability to spend on both wives equally, and you're able to deal justly with them, uh, then, khair inshallah. Then there's well and good. The sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. sunnati falaysa minni. Whoever turns away from my sunnah is not of me. But if you're going to be unjust na'am, in spending, unjust in uh, the time that you have and you share, remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who's unjust na'am, to his wives, is unjust. What happens to him? He come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, half his body paralyzed half his body paralyzed so we have to be careful and also there are those who do secret marriages we don't advise you with this at all because no marriage is secret the wife will eventually find out so don't get married there's no you can't have there's no such thing as a secret marriage how you have to separate the nights so don't do that which will bring harm to you later do not marry in secret and this, because this is not kindness to your parents or your wife. And many marriages end up now I'm in divorce because of this. Some people think they can just go and uh, get married in secret. Where did you go? You'll end up lying a lot. And Shaykh Ubaid rahimullah, na'am, he said, do not go and marry a second wife unless you are serious about the matter. And if you are able financially to remarry, and are able to be just, then seek your parents' permission, speak to them, na'am, and discuss with your wife with kindness and wisdom. She should be the first to know from you and not from others. This is that which is uh, advice of Sheikh Ubaid al Jabir regarding this. Many divorces happen because, na'am, because of this, be sincere 
in both your marriage. Uh, be sincere in both of your marriage that you have. Yani your wife is a trust upon you and the husband is a trust upon the wife. And every actions are according to one's intention. So be sincere in your marriage. Ha- show good treatment to your wife. And she shows good treatment to you. Marital problems begin uh, because one has left off good treatment to the other. Usually that's the case. That you leave off good manners to each other. And good manners should be first to your family. Al-aqrabuna awla bi ma'roof. Be gentle because gentleness beautifies your actions. Spend time together as the Messenger وسلم, would play and race with Aisha radi anha. Naam. And would spend time with his wives as we mentioned. Spend time apart and when you do come back. Naam. Uh, when you do come back from a journey, then you come back with gifts and kindness. And when she wants to go to her family, let her go to her family. Treat their in-laws well. Treat their in-laws well. If they are disobedient to Allah, advise them. Supplicate for them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. Be good to each other's parents. Don't speak bad about them. Rather, if you're good to them, maybe that will be a reason for them to be guided. Do not make your wife, uh, don't make her like a servant. Your wife is a trust upon you. Naam. So serve each other. Your wife should have her own space as well. Give her time that she needs. Naam. And show respect and mercy to each other. Do not name call each other. When you become angry and you fight and argue, shaitan gets the better of you and you start saying bad words to each other. This is wrong. Remember, every utterance that we say is recorded. And this will cause her to move away from you and, her, and you will move away from her. Do not shout and scream at each other because this will only bring about a heated argument in the house that may end up in, say, in talaq, in divorce. Be loyal, help each other, believe in men and women. They are loyal to each other, they have trusts. No doubt, build that. Even if you... If something happened, na'am, build it again. Bless all of our marriages. Do not ask for all of your rights. Because if you ask for all of your rights, you have to give her all of her rights. And you know that you fall short. And she's also a uh, human. A wife obeys her husband, and husbands do not overburden their wives. Keep your affairs private. Don't backbite, don't slander. And uh, the affairs of the home, keep them private. Not everybody wants good for you. Keep your affairs private. Be grateful and content with each other and the blessings of Allah upon you. For Allah has given you, that He has not given others. Don't look at those who are better than you in the dunya. Look at those who are less than you. Do not hate and beat your wife. The Messenger says, never hate anyone from his, uh, from the women. Love and affection that you show to each other. And this is, Naam, this is from good kindness to each other. Love and affection. Use the five senses. We have from the senses is what? Touch, yes. We have a smell, taste. Uh, Use these five senses in your marriage. Make it the best. The sight, naam. Which one did we miss? Hearing. You don't want to hear bad words. Use good words to each other. When you look at each other, you're pleased. Because each one, mashallah, is beautiful. When you smell each other, is you're pleased. Mashallah, tabarakallah. It's not, you know, uh, uh, onion breath or uh, garlic. When you smell each other, mashallah, you're pleased. Allahu Akbar. And also, we said, look, touch, hug your wife. Naam. Yani just as you would embrace uh, embrace someone you love of course you love your wife hug your wife just as somebody coming from a journey you hug them and these are things that you do uh, to show love with you, for each other uh, be patient with each other and there's many really many examples of how to 
remind each other of the salah, of the morning and evening du'as, um, do your adhkar for sleeping, remind each other of that, read over yourself and your family and your children, read over your family, yes, by you know, taking your palms together, you read the quls, read over utensils of water, and let your water, the wife drink from that, so that the knots that are gathered inside, if there's knots of magic, then that is released, inshallah. And you have to keep يعني, helping each other when one is sick, you show them compassion. Uh, the, from the last things is this beautiful advice from a khutbah نعم, that was given, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَدْ Allah created for you from yourselves, your spouses. And it is delil, and it is proof that the wife has been created نعم, for the woman, for the, for the man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the woman for the man to live in kindness with her, to live in tranquility with her, نعم, such that he can live a life of peace and tranquility. So when he comes home, he should feel raha, tranquility and calmness. And this is what he should find with her. And his heart is content. No. So when he comes home, he finds that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her, all of our marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and our families. No. And I uh, say this, and I say this, and I say this, and I say this. In Rahim. Today we have a lot of questions. I don't know if we're able to go through all of them, but it seemed like I remember when we visited Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz bin Baz Rahimullah in Riyadh in, uh, in 1998-99. Uh, most of the questions that he was asked was about marriage. Uh, when it comes to marriage, you get a lot of questions. Now, this one's asking about if you have a choice any of, of a two options, which one do you, and you can't decide. Pray istikhara and take one of the options. And uh, don't procrastinate. Just take one option that you feel is closer to your heart after doing istikhara and Allah will aid you. What are the signs of envy or evil eye and what can I do to chase it away or avoid it. Read your Qul Udr al-Falaq. Qul Allah Ahad, Qul Udr al-Falaq, Qul Udr al-Nas. Three times in the morning, three times in the night. That will suffice you. And there are other dhatkar that you say, A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tam ma ti min shari ma khalaq. Three times in the evening. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tam ma min kulli shaytanin wa haam ma wa min kulli aynin laam ma. Again, seeking refuge from the evil eye and from shaytan. So, evil eye is real. And uh, say the adkar and du'as. Not everybody wants good for you. And also, if any good you have, don't mention it to everybody. Only those who are close to you that you do not fear from them the evil eye. Is the Jum'ah ghusl obligatory? The scholars differed whether it's obligatory or not. Those who said it's obligatory, they say that Allah, there's a messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, ah, ghusl yawm al jum'ah wajibun ala kulli muhtalim. The bathing on Friday is obligatory upon everyone who's reached the age of puberty. Hadith Sahih. So this would seem that it's obligatory. But we have another hadith where the Prophet said, Man ikhtasala yawmul jum'ah fa biha wa ni'mat. Whoever fast, uh, whoever uh, bathes on a Friday, then, then well and good. Huh? So that doesn't show obligation. So the scholars differed. One time Uthman them, came late to the mash, to the prayer. Umar ibn Khattab was given the khutbah. And na'am, he did not command him to go and do ghusl. Because he said to him, pray to rak'az. When he did pray to rak'az, na'am, he came to know and he didn't do the ghusl. He said, and not the ghusl. But he didn't tell him to go and do the ghusl. There's some proofs like that which show us that it is not obligatory. But for some people it's obligatory. If you work in a field and you come with so much sweat and smell, it's obligatory upon you to do ghusl on Friday. 
or any other day you should do ghusl. If you haven't prayed, he says, and then realize there is only five minutes left, should you rush your salah or is it? No. If you have five minutes left, as long as you catch one raka'ah, then you quote the prayer. You see? Don't rush your prayer because itma'nan, tranquility, is a, condi- is a pillar in the prayer. So you can't rush it, but make sure you get the raka'ah. The, f- the one raka'ah before the time leaves. Can you read Surah Kaf and do Ghusl after Maghrib on Thursday? Read Surah Kaf on a Thursday night, you can. Because that's Friday, begins in the night. Yes? As for Ghusl, do it after Fajr. Ghusl, do it after Fajr. Because Ghusl, Yawm al He didn't say Laylat al He said Yawm al Is wajib. Yani wajib here means. Uh, that it is sunnah mu'akkadah that is stressed sunnah uh, assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi barakatuh wa alaikum assalamu alaikum barakatuh a man has a female cousin she is severely paralyzed may Allah cure her ameen hey uh, is it better for him to marry her or marry a non-paralyzed woman wallahi my dear brother this is um, pr- this preference is up to you if you wish to marry and be patient and help this sister for the sake of Allah, then you will be rewarded immensely. No. And this goes back to you. No. No doubt. The one who takes care of the needy, they will be rewarded immensely. No. But just make a decision that you know, yani, that you're basically not going to turn away, away from it later. Yani, ask Allah, if you're going to take that decision, you ask Allah to help you in that decision, make istikhar and don't regret at all. <coughs> Here it says, I always pray Salat al-Witr before Fajr. Sometimes I pray to Hajjud, I read it. Uh, was better to read Witr before you sleep? Oh, I read that it was better to read Witr before you sleep. So when is it better to pray? If you fear that you're going to, not going to pray at Fajr to, uh, before Fajr, then pray it after Isha, yani before you sleep, if you fear. But the best time to pray with it is the last third part of the night. But if you fear, then pray after Isha. How can I... Uh, something... How can I refute those who speak, who speak against the prince of Saudi? How can I refute? Look, we don't speak about the rulers. We don't speak about, we, we make dua for them. May Allah rectify them. May Allah bring them good advices that will help them uh, be upon the obedience to Allah. Allah masluhum. Allahumma a'inhum ala ta'atillah. We make dua for them as Fadail ibn Iyad said. And this is what the believer does. There's no perfect country in the whole dunya. Is there a perfect country? No. As for saying it's not an Islamic country, like Sayyid Qutb said, there isn't any mushtama' Muslim had al yawm. Wala dawla muslima fi had al yawm. He said there isn't any Islamic society in this day, nor is there any Islamic country on this day. This is what Sayyid Qutb said. This is misguidance. There's no Islamic society, subhanAllah. We are in Morocco, we had the Adhan. No one stops you from the five pillars of Islam. No one stops you from, from praying. No one stops you from fasting. No one stops you from uh, uh, um, yeah, zakah, giving a blink to charity. No one stops you from going hajj, alhamdulillah. They do uh, qur'a, lots, and they choose the ones who, uh, who it comes upon, based upon their age and, and the region. No one stops you from doing the five pillars. So what is Islam in your idea, in your uh, uh, يعني, thinking? Islam is five pillars. So what is Islam in your idea, those who say there is an Islamic country in the world? That is batil. MashaAllah, Egypt is Islamic country. Yemen is Islamic country. Pakistan is Islamic country. Allahumma barik. Morocco is Islamic country. Algeria is Islamic country. Saudi is Islamic country. Yemen is Islamic country. These are Islamic countries. Alhamdulillah, you pray, you fast. Are they perfect? No, not perfect. But the Prophet said, Sayyidina Ba'di Umara, they will be after me. 
leaders, plural, means there's going to be more than one country, Islamic country. There will be after me leaders. Sayyikunu ba'di umara, la yastanuna bi sunnati, wa la yahtaduna bi huday. They don't follow my sunnah, nor follow my guidance. Yakunu ma'ahum rijal, qulubum qulubu shayateen, fi juthmanil ins. They will have with them men, the hearts of devils, they will have with them, advising them, men, the hearts of devils, in the bodies of men. What should we do, O Messenger of Allah? Hear and obey. So long as they establish the prayer upon you. Alhamdulillah. In our countries, Alhamdulillah, the prayer is established. Walillahi alhamd. So we don't go out against the rulers, and whoever wants to advise the ruler, don't do it openly. Hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad. Don't do it openly. Don't speak about them openly. Those who do that, that is the way of the khawarij. That is the way of the khawarij. You openly uh, speak out against the leaders. It's not the way of the Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is we hear and obey in the righteous matters. Whether the ruler is righteous or evil. Who said that? Imam Ahmad rahimullah in his Usul Sunnah. نَسْمَعْ وَآدْ وَنَطِعْ أَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بَرًّا كَانَ أَوْ فَاجِرًا So what do you want me to do? Imam Ahmad rahimullah lived through four rulers. Three of them said the Quran is created. Statement of kufr. Are we going to say, خلاص, that he is... Uh, 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 why didn't he make takfir of any of those three? When they said the Quran is created. See? Then you had some, some guy with a... Shimar bent like that and he's talking on the, in Australia and he's talking to the people uh, from the Arabs and he's saying that yeah, there's no Muslim country same as what Sayyid Qutb said I don't know this guy's name but anyway I saw it on the internet even his Shimar was, was slipping even his Igal was slipping from his head from what he was saying Allah knows best he's saying that there's no Muslim country in the world he's criticizing Saudi Arabia uh, because why? Because of the United... They say, oh, they took part in United Nations uh, agreement. Ya Rajul, kufr is either i'tiqadi or amali. Could be belief or in action. You have to establish the proof upon them. Is every kufr take you out of Islam? That's number one. Number two, did you establish the hujjah upon them? Imam Ahmad, rahimullah, he heard a statement of kufr. That the Quran is created. A'udhu Billah. Quran is the speech of Allah. They said Quran is created. Not one of them, he said, is kafir. So not every action of kufr makes you a kafir. Killing a Muslim doesn't make you a kafir. So how can you rush to perform takfir on, on Muslims who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Even these takfiris, they make kufr, takfir of themselves. There was one in this country many years ago. Uh, Jamaica, from Jamaica. Naam. Faisal al-Jamaiki, he made takfir of himself in a lecture. They said that to him, oh, you made takfir of yourself. He said, oh, astaghfirullah, ashadu la ilaha ashadu ahad rasulullah. Then he said the shahada thereafter. So, these people, they are ignorant. A harb al-Kirmani, he said they are sifr, sifr fil ilm. They are zero in knowledge. He called them zeroers. So when you see takfir, you just say, the great scholar harb al-Kirmani said, you are zeroers. I'm not taking knowledge from you. You are zeroers. Barakallahu feekum. They don't have knowledge. They don't have knowledge. And they always, from their mind is, whoever doesn't rule by Allah's law is a kafir. Yaqi, the, re- the verses are free. You only mentioned one. And to them, in their mind is, khalas, you do kufr, you're kafir. No, it's not like that. Not every kufr makes you a kafir. You have to establish the hujjah upon the person. Shaykh Ibn Uthayim, Allah says in the Qawaid al-Mutla, you have to have ilm of what you're saying, and al-qasd, you have to intend the kufr. You have to intend rejecting the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did, he, did they intend that? Did you establish that? Oh, miskin. Even your igal is falling from your head, from what you're saying. Go and learn your deen before you speak. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he said about these individuals who are misguided, هم من بني جلدتنا ويتكلمون بألسنتنا. They are from our skin. They are Arabs who have misguidance. Like the Khawarij. And they speak with our tongue. But yet, when you ask them about tafsir of these verses, where Abdullah ibn Abbas said, it's not the kufr that you rush towards. ليس الكفر الذي تذهبون إليه. 
they have, don't have answer for that. So, these individuals, keep away from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide them to the truth. If only they studied properly. And were not just, as the Messenger Sallallahu said, Sufaha'ul ahlam hudatha'ul asnan. Foolish in their dreams. And uh, young in teeth. These individuals, mashallah, living in the land of disbelievers and he's speaking about the land of the Muslims. Ya akhi, if you were, had to go back to your Muslim land, then why don't you go back? Do you hear Adan openly, outwardly in Australia? Are you able to establish all that, that which is legislated in Sharia in the non-Muslim countries? You're not able to do everything. So why don't you live in, alhamdulillah, our country? So you criticize the Muslim countries which have Adan, which have, mashallah, you're able to have halal meat, you're able to uh, slaughter a sheep in Eid al-Adha, you're able to do all those legislations that, that passed your mind. You established the legislation of Allah in your life you're able to do. With the zakah, with the hajj, with the umrah, with the fasting, with all those legislations you need to do. And you'll go and live in land of non-Muslims, firing your, uh, your poison against the Muslim countries. Showing more compassion uh, over there. I met one here who's from Makkah. From Makkah, you, you drive a walk st- on Stoke Proges Lane than, Makkah, than being Makkah al-Mukarramah because of your takfir and because of your ignorance. If you were patient, mashallah, tabarakallah, if you were patient, that would have been better for you. You run away from there, from Makkah al-Mukarramah. You pray one praise, 100,000 praise. You leave that and to, leave, to, to walk Stoke Podges Lane. That just shows me that you, yeah, you need, to, need to study your deen. Go back to your deen. Irja' fata'allam fa'innaka lam tata'allam. Why does camel meat break wudu? I don't know. Eat, if you eat it, it breaks wudu. I don't know why. <coughs> Not everything... We know the reason. That's why we have samuta. How does the husband balance looking after elderly parents who require a close eye and physical support when they become frail versus providing his wife and a separate space if she requests? As nowadays, even amongst some Muslims, the parents are placed in care homes. No, don't put your mother in a care home or parents in a care home. You look after them. Now, if you have a big house where there are two separate quarters, there's nothing wrong with that. If there are two separate quarters, now, where your wife has her own kitchen, own space to cook, don't create a situation which will... You look, every mother likes the best for her son. Isn't that right? Every mother likes the best for her son. And maybe, out of her love for her son, now, she wants better... From the, from the wife, from her son's wife. Maybe she wants better. Shaitan will come and whisper, oh, she didn't do this, oh, she didn't do that. So don't create a situation where it may cause you a uh, divorce. So each one have their space, fine. But look after them. They could have a house next door. Next door. Nah, could be a reason, inshallah, for you to look after them. Or even living nearby. Don't abandon them, but also give your rights to your wife. Who is being referred to when the Prophet said to Hafsa? No. When he said to her that your uncle is a prophet and you are a son of a prophet. No, because no, the uh, Bani Israel. Israel, the name Israel means Yaqub. The son of Yaqub is who? Is Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. All of them were Muslims, but they were from Bani Israel. They were from Bani Israel. So from the tribes of the Jews, but they were from, uh, they were Muslims. We established the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that lineage there from Ishaq, uh, Yaqub, Yusuf, they, that leads Bani Israel. No. So he comforted her. He comforted Safiya, and he said to her, "You have all. You come from that lineage of prophets. So, uh, 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 and you are also married to a prophet. 
So why does anyone have any statement against you? If you find it was very hard to lower your gaze, what should you do? Like if you see a girl who is very pretty and see her a lot, how should he lower his gaze? He should not see her a lot. Don't see her a lot. Uh, you're allowed one look, and that's it. One look, don't make it too long or long. Just one look, you have one look. And then you ask Allah to protect you and get married if you're able. Now, if she's a good girl, and, um, tell your mother that I like this girl. Now, and she, mashallah, not just pretty, but mashallah, she's upon the deen. Fadfar bidati deen. Choose the deen. Barakallahu feek. May Allah guide us and guide you. You realize that prettiness uh, is in akhlaq, is in manners first. The, how beautiful a woman lo- is important to lower your gaze but more important than that is her deen her akhlaq her manners you don't want to marry a, a woman that shouts at you uh, that puts you down in front of others no? you want a woman that is kind to you gentle and obeys Allah and his messenger so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless all of us and our families and our children بارك الله فيكم وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك